Hello everyone, how are you all today? Hopefully you're all well and happy. Today I'm going to be teaching you 10 very British phrasal verbs. Now these phrasal verbs are very British either because they are literally used in the UK only, so specific to the UK, or very British because they kind of echo the British sense of being or the British way of thinking. Okay, so these are my top 10 British phrasal verbs. Now, phrasal verbs are a really important aspect of the English language, but also a real headache for students to learn. We use them in everyday speech, in all conversations, whether it's a professional conversation, a chat with your mum, socially with friends, in education. So they're very, very common. But there's no kind of blanket rules to cover a lot of phrasal verbs in one go. So you have to learn phrasal verbs on an individual basis, which can be tricky. And Sometimes the words do not give you any indication either. Sometimes it's easy to work out, but other times it can really throw you. If something throws you, then it confuses you, completely confuses you. So it's very tricky. And if you are someone who struggles particularly to learn phrasal verbs, you're really struggling and you find it really dull to learn big lists of phrasal verbs, then do stick around to the end because I'm going to tell you about an opportunity for you to learn 300 phrasal verbs in just 30 days. But more about that at the end. So do feel free to comment and say hello. And when I introduce each phrasal verb, I encourage you to write a sentence using the phrasal verb so that you get some practice and experience of using it. This is one of the best ways to help you to remember a new phrase or a new word. Okay, fantastic. So lots of you here already. All right, let's get started then. So the very first phrase of verb is rained off. Now it would be rain off without the ed but I very rarely hear it in any other tense other than the past tense, rained off. So I'm teaching it like this, rained off. Now, if something is rained off, then it means it has been canceled due to rain. And this is exactly why I chose this phrase of verb because in the UK, it rains a lot. In fact, it's been raining today. <laughs> it's always quite wet here. so an event that's been organized and then canceled because of the rain has been rained off. Let me give you an example sentence here. Let me share it with you so that you can all see it. So the example sentence is, the school football match was rained off this afternoon. So we decided to take the boys to the cinema instead. So the school football match was rained off this afternoon. So we decided to take the boys to the cinema instead. I'm not sure if you're seeing that on screen. I can't see it at my end. There we go. The school football match was rained off this afternoon. So we decided to take the boys to the cinema instead. Okay. Another example sentence could be, let me share it with you. We have arranged an outdoor picnic party for Tara's third birthday. I just hope we don't get rained off. Let me share this one with you. If it comes up, it's being a little slow. Come on. <laughs> oh, why is it being so slow? We have arranged an outdoor picnic party for Tara's third birthday, I just hope we don't get rained off. Okay, is that coming on screen for you now? Hopefully it is. Brilliant. Okay, so let's have a look now at some of your example sentences. 
So one I can see here is my cousin's wedding was rained off. Yes, that would be very unfortunate if your wedding has been cancelled because of the rain. That would be awful. A lot of planning and time and money goes into creating the wedding, doesn't it? And if it had to be cancelled at the last minute because of bad weather, that would be terrible. Um, here we go is another one. If that comes up on screen for me. Unfortunately, the match rained off due to the weather will be cloudy. Okay, so there's a few things to correct here. Unfortunately, the match was, so we need that word in there, the match was rained off. And then we don't need anything else. Unfortunately, the match was rained off. Rained off tells us that it's being cancelled due to, wet, to bad weather. So you don't need to use due to the weather. Um, and if you're saying the weather's cloudy, then that's contradicting the phrase of verb rained off because rained off means it's being cancelled due to rain. Okay, so the weather being cloudy, that doesn't make sense adding that on. So all you need to say is, unfortunately, the match was rained off. Okay, let me have a look at another one. Um, my plans were all rained off this afternoon. What a day. <laughs> good. That's good. My plans were all rained off this afternoon. What a day. Good. I don't know why these aren't coming up on screen. I do apologize. <clears throat> Romelia, hello. One of my students. Hi, nice to see you, Romelia. You've said, hopefully the phrase of verbs course won't be rained off. Make sure you put the double F on that one, um, because is online. Um, okay, so we would change this to make more sense. We don't need hopefully, we, we'd, we'd use luckily. Luckily, because hopefully means that you're hoping or praying that something doesn't happen. But we're saying that the course can't be rained off because it's online, right? So you'd say, luckily, it's very lucky that or fortunately, fortunately, the phrasal verbs course can't rather than won't, can't be rained off. It's not possible. We use can't to mean it's not possible. Fortunately, the phrasal verbs course can't be rained off because it is online. Good. Thank you for sharing that one, Romelia. Uh, fantastic. Okay, let's go on to the next one. I feel like a lot of you have got the, got the gist of rained off. So let's move on to the next phrase of verb, and that is pop out. Pop out. Now, to pop out, it, you can use this in different ways, but it's used very um, regularly in the UK in more informal situations, but you can use it at work as well in the office with your colleagues. If you're going to nip out briefly, <laughs> nip out is another one, if you're going to go out and come back. So that's an important part of it. You go out and you come back. So you say to someone, I'm just popping out for a moment. I will be back in a minute. So if we are sitting, having a project meeting, we're all brainstorming, coming up with ideas for a new project. And I say, sorry, I just need to pop out. I'll just be a few minutes. Then you know I'm going to return very quickly, but I need to do something. Maybe I need to take a phone call or go to the toilet or tell someone something very important who's sitting out in another office. So for some reason, I need to leave, but I'll be very quickly, I'll be back very quickly, okay? So I'm just going to pop out for a short period. Here's an example sentence, let me share with you. So imagining we're talking about an exam. When our teacher popped out during the exam, one student started asking his friends for help with some of the questions. Naughty student, cheating on the exam. But when our teacher popped out 
So she left very briefly. She wasn't out for long, but she was out for a few minutes. When our teacher popped out during the exam, one student started asking his friends for help with some of the questions. So pop out will always um, will always inform you that the amount of time the person was gone was short. So if they're gone for a short period of time, we can use pop out, pop out. We can also use pop simply um, in a sentence like, I'm going to pop to the shop or I'm popping out to the shop. I'm popping out to town. I'll go and come back as quickly as I can. Okay, uh, Richie. Uh, you've said um, an idea has just popped out of my mind. Uh, normally, because pop means something happens quickly, you know, it's a sound, a uh, pop, but something can pop out of a box, like we have a, a jack in the box that goes pop. Um, so if things jump out at you very quickly, then we can use this, this verb pop. Um, and if you have an idea, we can say it popped out of my mind, but normally we'd say it popped into. So it just popped in rather than popped out. Yeah. Uh, oh, something just popped into my mind. I don't know why I thought of that. It just popped into my mind or popped up is another one. <laughs> Lots of phrasal verbs here. Something just popped up. That means something just came up out of nowhere. Something um, presented itself or an idea came out of nowhere. Oh, something just popped up. Something just popped into my mind. Yeah. Um, but pop out is less common, I'd say. The thing is with phrasal verbs as well is they can change depending on which region you're in. So some regions will use certain phrasal verbs more than other regions. So Manuel's here. He says, just a second, I pop out to grab a coffee and come back soon. So you need, um, you need something else in there. Um, I'm going to pop out or I need to or I am popping out. But you wouldn't say I pop out if it's some, you're telling someone that something's about to happen. So um, just a second, I need to pop out or I'm going to pop out to grab a coffee. I'll come back soon. Okay. So just a second, I need to pop out to grab a coffee. I'll come back soon. Okay, fantastic. I'm not sure if that came up on screen for you or not. Apologies if it didn't. Um, okay, I Iana, you said she is just pop out. Okay, if you're talking about someone else has just left briefly, but they're going to come back soon, then you say she has not she is, she has, she has just popped out. She has just popped out. And actually what you do is contract it. We often contract, um, particularly when speaking. She's, she's just popped, you put popped into the past tense. She's just popped out. Yeah. Or if they haven't popped out yet, but they're going to, you say she is just about to pop out. Um, she can't talk on the phone now. So someone's just called for her. Oh, hi, you want to speak to Audrey? Oh, sorry, she's just about to pop out. Can you call back later? Yeah. So just being careful with the tenses there. Um, <laughs> and we've got one here. I'm popping out before the meeting starts. Perfect. Yes, yeah, so you're in the office and you just let everyone know, I'm just popping out before the meeting starts, meaning I'm going out briefly now, but I will be back in time for the meeting starting. I'm only going to be five minutes. I'm just, just popping out before the meeting starts. Okay. Okay, good. You all seem to be getting the hang of it. All right, there's this one here. Um, I was just popped out because I had an emergency. You don't need was here. You can just say, I just popped out. What did you, where did you go? I just popped out because I had an emergency. Yeah, I just popped out. That's what I did. 
Yeah, I just need to pop out. I'll be right back. Perfect. Good. Okay, everyone seems to be getting the hang of it. Here we go. Let's have a good look at this one. I was I went to open the mailbox and I nearly got a heart attack when a raccoon popped out. Okay, so here you're using pop out in a different way. So this is pop out is what I said before when something jumps out quickly. So you went to open the mailbox and that's very American to have a mailbox. I went to open the mailbox. We don't have mailboxes here because we have um, we have slots in our front doors to our houses and the post gets put through our door. Uh, unless you have a huge house with a big estate and get you know it's gated so people can't come into the property they have to stop at the gate and then there'd be a mailbox on the front but in america a mailbox is very typical to have a mailbox at the front of your garden or your yard uh, in the uk we don't tend to use that phrase but um but yes i went to open the mailbox and i nearly had we don't get a heart attack we have heart attacks so I nearly had a heart attack when a raccoon popped out. Ah, <laughs> very good. Very good. Right, let's move on to the next one. So we've had rained off and pop out. So the next one is ask round, ask round. Now, this might sometimes be confused with ask around with an A to ask around. Now, if you ask around, it means you ask a number of people for information. So I don't know something, but I might ask around. Okay, here's an example, real life. We had a storm here recently in the UK and our tree in our garden has blown down. So it's now, it, it broke through the fence and broke through another set of fences. So it's gone through two gardens with our neighbors and uh, caused a lot of damage. And we need a chainsaw to chop up the tree, to cut the tree into pieces, to be able to move it and fix the fences. So we have to ask around. Now, this is different to the one I'm, I'm displaying on screen. So ignore that one for a minute. I need to ask around to see if anyone has a chainsaw we can use or if anyone knows how we can get rid of this tree from the back of our house. So I will ask around for information, ask many people if they have any information for me. Now, that's ask around with an A at the beginning. Ask round is different and you'll understand via the context as to which version you're using. Ask round means to invite someone to your house for dinner, for tea, for a chat, for a social, okay? So I might um, ask um, everyone, um, I will ask everyone on my street round for a cuppa and ask around to see if anyone has a chainsaw. Okay, so there I've used both versions, ask round and ask around. I will ask everyone on my street round for a cuppa. So I will invite everyone on my street round for a cuppa and ask around to see if anyone has a chainsaw. So there you see, ask round is separable. So we can separate that one. Uh, I will ask him round. I will ask them round. Could you ask me round someday? I'd love to come to your house. Whereas ask around to try and gather information is not separable. We need to ask around to find something out. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so let me give you another example sentence of this. Uh, 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 I'll give you two examples here. So the first one is, can I ask Haley round for tea? 
That's the first sentence. Can I ask Haley around for tea? So can I invite Haley for tea? And and here tea could be a cup of tea, but really what it means is a meal. Um, in the north of England, dinner, so the evening meal, is referred to as tea. Okay, so in the north of England, they tend to have breakfast, dinner is lunch, and tea. Breakfast, dinner, and tea. In the south of England, it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay, so it can be confusing. But if someone's asking you around for tea, they're probably asking you if you want to come around for an evening meal. And then the next example here is, James was delighted to be asked round to the Peterson's house. Oh, you asked me around for tea. I'm so excited. Uh, a copper equals a cup of tea. Yes, thanks for sharing that, Richie. A copper means a cup of tea. Okay, let me give some examples of what you're writing up here. I ask around, meaning of many phrasal verbs. So I ask around my English friend for dinner to help me out. Okay. I, I'm trying to think of a good word to exchange, ask around for, so you know how to place it into a sentence. So you wouldn't say I ask around, I ask around meaning. You have to ask around for something. Okay, so I ask around for someone to help me. I ask around to find directions. So you can use to as well. But you have to have some sort of preposition there to say what you're asking around for. So here, I ask around for the meaning of many phrasal verbs. I ask around to get the meaning of many phrasal verbs. Okay, so you need four or two there. So I ask and then separate this one. Get used to separating them. I ask my English friend round for dinner to help me out. Okay. I mean, you don't have to separate phrasal verbs, but it, I think it sounds more natural. If, if they are separable, I think it sounds more natural to separate them. Um, so here's another one. I want to ask around them if I ought to get a lot of information. Okay, so there's a few corrections here. Uh, I need to ask around in order to get a lot of information. So you don't ask around them. It's just like I explained earlier. You ask around for information or you ask around to get information or to find information but you don't ask around them or ask around me. You don't use a pronoun there. It doesn't work, okay? You can exchange this, I guess, for inquire. It doesn't quite work in the same way. But yeah, four or two work well. A pronoun doesn't, okay? I hope that helps. <laughs> Sorry, lots of comments coming through. I'm, I'm streaming to Facebook and YouTube at the same time, so I'm seeing all your comments in one go, and there's lots of them. I was asked round to join the dinner, double N, unless you're meaning diner, which is an American cafe, but I think you mean dinner. I was asked around to join the dinner, but I couldn't attend since I was abroad for business. Good. And te technically, we tend to say abroad on business or away on business. So on business rather than for business. For business is fine, but we tend to say on business. Let me see if I can see any others here. Um, Uh, Rohit, you said, if you're, if you're over 15, 15 plus, you can go down to your local town centre and ask around for jobs. So don't be confused. This version is ask around. So you need an A at the beginning of round. Ask around. Ask around. Around the local area. Ask lots of people, but not ask round. Okay, put an A on it. But otherwise, good. Okay, here is another one. I'll ask around 
my friends, oh, do you know what? This does work okay. I'll, I ask around my friends. I ask around my friends if they found... So, okay, earlier I said you can't use a pronoun ask after ask around, but saying I'll, I'll ask around my friends actually does work. I'll ask around my friends, but then you need two after it. I'll ask around my friends to see if they found my book. I'll ask around my friends to find out if they found my book. Yeah, but you can say... I'll ask around my friends. I'll ask around my friends. I'll ask around my colleagues. I'll ask around some of the people on the street to find out something. Okay. But you just wouldn't say, I ask around them. That doesn't sound right. Okay. So we've had three phrasal verbs so far. Let's move on. We are now going on to shoot off, shoot off. So if you shoot off somewhere, it means you go somewhere very, very quickly. Um, and this is different to pop out because pop out means you come back. You go away and you come back quickly. But shoot off is just leave. All right. And it might be that you're leaving suddenly. So without explanation, just up and go. Whoa. What happened? He just shot off. I, d I don't know. Is something wrong? Or it might be that you just have to um, go quickly at a certain time. So it might not be sudden. For example, in my example sentence, I've said, let me get it up for you. It's great to be here, but just as a heads up, I have to shoot off at 4.30. So it's great to be here, but just as a heads up, a heads up means I'm giving you some warning just to warn you. So heads up, be warned, see what I'm telling you or hear what I'm telling you, heads up. We use that a lot. Um, heads up, here's a heads up. And this is because I think um, when you're throwing something, if people aren't looking, they might get hit in the head. So if you're if you threw something in the air and someone is in the way, you might say heads up <laughs> and they lift their heads up and they see it and they then might catch it or dodge out of the way. But we use this phrase for warning people about anything that might be unexpected to them or unusual. So just as a heads up, uh, there's news that we might be going into lockdown or just as a heads up, I have to go to hospital, but everything's fine. It's nothing serious. For example, when our tree blew down, moments before it happened, I sent a text message to my neighbor to say, just a heads up, I think our tree might be falling down. The earth is surging, bulging, Every time the wind blows and it's leaning a lot, we've tried to secure it. But just as a heads up, I think it might blow down. Please stay away from the garden. I don't want anyone to get hurt. So I gave my neighbor a heads up. So use it exactly the same as the word warning. Just as a heads up, I need to shoot off at 4.30. That means I need to leave very quickly at 4.30. Okay. All right, let's have a look at some of your examples. Oh, has that come up? No, where is it? Um, here we go. Here we go. This should come up now. When he get angry, he just shoot off without explanation. That's not come on screen, has it? I don't know why. Hmm. Okay, when he get angry, he just shoot off without explanation. So this would be when he gets, he gets, I get, you get, he, she gets. You put an S on it for the he, she, they, you know, he, she, he, she gets, we get, they get, yeah. He gets, she gets. When he gets angry, he just shoots, and again, you put an S on this, shoots off without explanation. Okay. Um, 
uh shoot off always have the meaning of hurry jj you're asking the question does shoot off always mean hurry uh yes yes um there is other versions of shoot off which off the top of my head i think it's more american but if you shoot off your mouth you can shoot off your mouth i think it's a very american term but if you shoot off your mouth it means that you you say things without thinking usually um usually quite negative things so if someone explodes and just starts saying nasty things then you'd say why did you shoot off your mouth like that i think i think it's an american term though but otherwise the very british version to shoot off just means to leave very quickly or very promptly so i know we're in the middle of talking but i really need to shoot off i'm sorry we'll finish this conversation tomorrow bye okay good Okay, Maureen, you said, I will shoot off the dinner. You put buku, I think you mean because I need to go. All right, so this would be, I will shoot off after dinner because I need to go. Okay, I will shoot off after dinner because I need to go. Um, Moss, Moss, Mossin, you said, I have an urgent meeting with my new business partners today so i have to shoot off in half an hour perfect that sounds very natural very natural all right um all right okay so one more here i need to shoot off because the store will be closed soon here, you just need to um, shorten it. I need to shoot off because the store will close soon. Okay, the store will close. The store will close soon. Otherwise, perfect. Um, um, Bora, you said, Jake shot off as he received a call from the hospital. So you just need to add the there. Okay. Jake shot off as he received a call from the hospital. Okay. Good. Brilliant. Let's go on to the next one. So we've had rained off, pop out, ask round, come round, uh, shoot off. And number five is going to be brush off, brush off. Now the version I'm talking about is to refuse to accept or consider something that someone's saying or refuse to accept that it's important. So it, you might say this about something that someone's saying or it might be something you're experiencing that you refuse to acknowledge. For example, if I had a tummy ache every day for a week, I probably should talk to someone about that, maybe see a doctor. I've got stomach ache. I've had stomach ache for a week. I don't know what's going on. Um, or I might need to think about what I'm eating, make a food diary or something. But if I ignore it and, and think to myself, it's nothing, it'll be fine, it's nothing, then I'm brushing it off. I'm just brushing it off. So here's my example sentence to help you get... Um, to grips with this one to get to grips with something is to really understand it to hold on to it and get it understand it uh, so i tried several times to warn my friend about the dangers of smoking but she just brushed it off now she has lung cancer <laughs> so it's a very depressing one but this gives you a real real clear indication she, she almost like, it's like you literally brush the information away. You don't want to listen to it. You don't want to engage with it. You just brush it away. No, 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 it's fine. It can also be if someone's providing you with information or trying to talk to you and you don't want to listen to them because you don't like them, maybe, to just brush them off. No. Okay. 
So I tried several times to warn my friend about the dangers of smoking, but she just brushed it off. There you go. It's separable. Now she has lung cancer. Um, yeah, so to brush off is to ignore. Yes, very much to ignore. She just ignored it. Okay, um, guys, anyone asking for things unrelated to this lesson, uh, I won't be able to help right now because it's really important to stay focused on the main lesson. But I'll give you a chance to ask questions at the end, okay? Um, just trying to find an example. Okay, here we go, Ella. Hello, Ella. I've been brushing off my medical exams just because I dislike going to the hospital. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've been brushing off my medical exams just because I dislike going to the hospital. I hope that's not true, by the way. I think it's really important if you have checkups that you go, even if you don't like it, because always with health, it's better to catch things early than to leave it until it becomes a real problem. Um, Teco, good. No, darling, I'm not brushing you off. <laughs> Very good. So if someone thinks that you are just ignoring them and treating them like they're unimportant, then you might say to them, I'm not brushing you off. Or you might say, I don't know why he keeps brushing me off. He keeps brushing me off. He keeps ignoring me. Yeah, we can use it this way as well. He's been giving her the brush off. You can also use um, giving someone the cold shoulder to give someone the cold shoulder, but to give someone the brush off, yes, you can turn it into <clears throat> a noun there. Uh, let me just get something up on screen here. The comments move so fast. I told my son that the games are not useful, but he is brush off. Um, but he brushed it off or he brushed me off. I told my son that the games are not useful, but he brushed ED in the past. He brushed me off. He brushed it off. So he either brushed you off. So he's ignoring you, or you can say he ignored it as in the information. Yeah. Either version would be fine to brush me off or brush it off. <clears throat> Ginny always kept brushing off my words so she has to face the consequences yeah that works that works um Derek hi Derek one of my friends always brushes off the importance of health really good and then we have Laura here hi Laura how are you uh my friend would keep saying that I was whoa Ah, I just lost that. Why did that go? Ah, sorry, I just had an <laughs> explosion of comments and your comment just flew off the page. My friend, just be careful of the spelling, my friend with an R, my friend would keep saying that it was I was delusional at trying to be an actor. I just brushed it off and kept performing instead. So a couple of corrections. Capital letter at the beginning, my friend spelling would... My friend would keep saying that I was delusional at trying to be an actor. So you're not delusional at something. So you're delusional in general. So I'd rearrange this. I'd say my friend kept saying my dreams of becoming an actress or an actor were delusional or were deluded. Or my friend kept saying, I was delusional because I was trying to be an actor. I just brushed it off and kept performing instead. You can also use another phrasal verb to keep on. I kept on. I kept on performing. Good. Uh, all right, let's go to the next one. So the next phrasal verb we've got is cheer up, to cheer up cheer up. We use this a lot. This is very British in its kind of sentiment. We, we have a very grey country here. And the British people, although I think it's terrible to generalise, 
But the British people tend to try and keep personal matters to themselves. We're quite closed as pe- as, as a, a group of people. We're not very open generally. Um, and so when someone's feeling a bit sad about something, we kind of have this mentality of cheer up, it'll be fine. Stiff upper lip and all that. Cheer up. Just cheer up. It'll be fine. So you can tell someone you've had some terrible news about your health. And, oh, dear, that's terrible. Anyway, cheer up. Let's have a cuppa. <laughs> OK, so this this idea of let's just become happier and brush off all the bad news. OK, pop round, have a cuppa with your friend and cheer up. So to become happier. Now, you can make someone else happier. You would cheer them up. So you can either cheer up yourself or you can cheer someone else up. So here are two example sentences. I'm going to post them as one. Oh dear, there's a typo in that one. Oh no. Sorry, I just saw that typo as I posted it. Ignore my typo. Or can you spot my typo? There we go. Can you spot my typo? A little test for you. Um, so the sentence I've written here with a mistake and I want you to pick it out the sentence is thank you for coming over seeing you oh no it isn't a typo seeing you has really cheered me up it's not a typo it's not a typo (laughs) it's um as I posted it in it, it showed up as a typo you know it underlines it in red and I was like oh yes that's a typo but it's not The computer thought that has was a typo, but it should be you have really cheered me up. If you if you didn't have seeing you. So the act of seeing you. That has really cheered me up. If I took away seeing you and just had you, it would be you have really cheered me up. But the computer is wrong. I am right. Okay, I wish there was something I could do to cheer you up. I wish there was something I could do to cheer you up. How about I cook dinner tonight? Does that sound good? Not with my cooking. Um, Okay, cheer up. Things aren't really that bad. Yeah, good. Very nice. Um, Oh, Oh, here's a nice one. Um, Oh, I've lost it again. It keeps jumping. (laughs) there's some really nice ones coming through here guys let me see if I can get one on on the screen my sneezy dog cheered up when I brushed off her suggestion that I should brush off the dust off the dusty floor (laughs) okay that's a very big sentence the sneezy dog the sneezy dog so a dog that's got a cold and sneezing The sneezy dog cheered up when I brushed off her suggestion. So the dog is suggesting that you brush the dust off the floor. Is that right? Um, The sneezy dog cheered up when I brushed off her suggestion that I should brush off the dust off the dusty floor. That's a very complicated one. And I would need to sit down (laughs) um, with a pencil, I think, with that one. So I'm going to move on. Um, Here we go. Let's do this one. I bought her, I bought, I brought to her flowers to cheer her up. I brought to her flowers to cheer her up. That does work. It it was a bit confusing because um, I would say I bought her flowers to cheer her up, as in I paid money for flowers to give to her. You, You have used brought, which means to bring so you might not have paid for them. You might have picked them out of the garden, but you've physically brought them to her. I brought to her flowers. So you've messed up the, not messed up, it works. It's just not typical. You might say, I brought flowers to her more. That would be more natural. I brought flowers to her to cheer her up. But what you've done technically does work. Um, let me see. Okay, Chris, you said the red pencil marks all over my sentence did nothing to cheer me up. Brilliant. It did nothing to cheer me up. So it didn't cheer you up at all. (laughs) I like that one. I like that one. 
And I like this one too. All my attempts to cheer her up proved futile. So they were useless, a waste of time. They didn't work. They failed. Brilliant. Well done, guys. I think that's one that you really, you're really um, getting to grips with. Okay. Well, to cheer you all up, particularly those of you who struggle with um, phrasal verbs, I'm going to now just take a moment before I finish off the list, because we have one, two, three, four more on the list. Before I finish off the list, I'm going to take a moment just to tell you about this language booster that's going to be launching on the 1st of March. Um, it's something that I've been working for months on and I think is going to be very useful for people of all levels, actually, who really want to become not just familiar with phrasal verbs, but very comfortable using phrasal verbs, as well as also having a chance to boost your language in general. Now, this is a 30-day challenge. However, you have access to all the material for life once you sign up. So we're pushing for you to do it in 30 days, and there'll be live lessons that happen within the 30 days in order to keep you motivated and to push you through because learning something in a more intense way is more beneficial. But if you want to take it a little slower than you can, but the deadline for signing up is the 1st of March. And after that, you won't be able to access the course. So if you're interested in learning 300 very common phrasal verbs, then you want to pay attention to what I'm about to show you. So I'm going to share with you now the first lesson of the phrasal verb course, just so you get a good idea for how it actually looks. Now, this is the lesson. But in addition to this, you'll also get a daily email. You'll also receive a PDF and audios so that you can listen rather than have to watch videos. You can listen instead or use it on your way to work before you come and do the lesson later in the day. And then there's also going to be five live lessons throughout the 30 day period with me. OK, so let me show you this um, lesson here. Let me hide this so you can see it. And let me press play. Hopefully you'll be able to hear this. Hi everyone, Anna here. And today I'm going to be walking you through the English language booster phrasal verb edition. I'm just going to give you a taster of what a typical lesson looks like. So this is a 30 day challenge. Ideally you'll run it um, across 30 consecutive days. But if you need to take a break, then you absolutely can do because you'll have access to all of these materials for life from the point of enrollment. So we start here on day one. And let me just move this out of the way so that we can see this in full. So you start here on day one and you will have a lovely video where I will introduce the phrasal verbs that you are learning for that particular day. And then if you need to catch up with any of them or just further study them, we have an accordion that gives you the meanings and example sentences for each. Then you'll come across some tips and then we move into the activities and the activities are there to reinforce your learning. This one is a mark the word activity where you're encouraged to try and find some of the phrasal verbs that we've been learning. And I'll just do one there. There you see, I've got two points. Fantastic. There are 31 points available. So I should come back and try this one again later. And then we move on. There's another video. And this one is actually more of a story. So there'll always be phrasal verbs to be learned in context because learning in context is much easier for us. Our memories are more likely to work if we have some context to attach those phrasal verbs to. So that will be your story to listen to. Here there's some additional text for you, some more information. And then we have another activity. This one is a drag the word activity. So here I'm encouraged to complete the sentences. Once I hmm, find out what time my train leaves, I will let you know. Fantastic. And once I've pulled all those into the right places, I can check whether or not I've got full marks. Looks like I've started out well, though. <laughs> Then we have a. Oh no, what's happening? Oh, guys, I don't know what just happened. Oh, what just happened there? 
Okay. <laughs> oh, these technical things. I've been trying to set this up all afternoon and uh, these things <clears throat> don't always go to plan. I'm sorry. Sorry. Some of you were saying the sound was low and obviously it just cut off before uh, you got to the end of that. But what you didn't see there was that the next exercise that it was showing you was a speak the word exercise. So you have an opportunity to actually speak and the device will listen to you and tell you whether you've said the right word to complete the sentences. Um, basically, every lesson will include two videos. There'll be one that goes through all the phrasal verbs, kind of like we've done today, with the meanings and a few examples. You can also then, you'll have a PDF of all of those too, and there'll be always a point of reference in every lesson for each phrase or verb. Then there'll be different things throughout the lesson, and every lesson's slightly different, but you'll always have two or three exercises in each of the main lessons. And they will either be uh, drag the words, so you drag words into spaces, you type the words into sentences, you might have to speak the word to complete the sentence, or it might be a true-false set of questions, or a multiple choice set of questions. But all of these interactive activities will tell you straight away if you're right or wrong. And you don't have to go then looking up the answers, it will tell you what you got right and what's wrong, which is really helpful. You can then retry uh, later on if you want to take a break, double check the meanings and come back to the activities, you can. Um, and then there's always then a task at the end of each lesson where you have to go to our community. Now, the community is in addition where you can interact with your fellow students and there'll be teachers there as well. And there will always be a task to either write something or to share a story or to ask questions if you have any doubts or you might be asked to record your voice. You don't always, you don't have to take part, but you're encouraged to and share your recordings and interact with one another. And this is really where the motivation for pushing through comes, having that knowledge that other people are doing it with you, seeing that other people are struggling with the same things that you're struggling with, getting a pat on the back and a well done from your fellow students and teachers. So there's the community aspect as well in your tasks that you have to complete every day. And then finally, of course, we have the live sessions where you'll have an opportunity to ask me questions if there's anything you're um, unsure about. It's a Zoom call, so you can talk to me directly. And then there'll also be um, an opportunity to have English conversations with your fellow students. So run in the sim a similar sort of way as our conversation club sessions, um, but with more time with the teacher, with me, to ask your questions and clear any doubts you may have. Uh, everything that you need to know, in addition to what I've shown you for the challenge, is um, available on the website. So you can simply go to our website and click Booster, which is in the top menu, to find out everything. Or there is a link directly to the Booster information page in the description of this video. So you can find all that out. But it starts on the 1st of March. It will run for 30 days. Everything will be available to you for life after you've bought. If you can't attend the live lessons, they will be recorded and you'll have access to those as well. So you're not going to miss out on anything other than interacting. But if you can't attend a lesson and you have questions, you can simply ask in advance and I'll answer the questions in the live lesson so that you see the answers to those. OK, the price of the language booster is £35 or 42 euros, depending on where you are, or you might see $49. So it's all a similar price, just converted into the different currencies to make it easier for you based on wherever you are in the world. Okay. If you do have any other questions, then feel free to ask and I'll try and answer them for you. But um, I'm very excited. We already have a number of students who have joined and I'm really excited about the difference that this is going to make to your vocabulary bank. Okay, so without further ado, that means I'm not going to delay any more. Let's carry on with our lesson. So the next phrasal verb is to get at. Now, to get at, there's a few versions of this, but what I want to talk about is when someone is trying to express something. 
And we often see this phrasal verb in the form of a question. What are you getting at? What was he getting at? I don't understand. What's he trying to get at? What I'm asking with this question is, what are you trying to say? What's your point? What's your meaning? What are you getting at? As <laughs> Now, the reason I've chosen this as a very British phrasal verb is because British people are not very direct. We are inherently indirect because we don't want to offend. I mean, this is in general, of course. Some people in the UK can be very offensive and very direct and very rude. But generally, we are brought up to be indirect. And so it can be quite hard to understand exactly what we mean. And so you might have to say, look, what are you getting at? Just tell me. Just be, be direct, be blunt, be to the point. Um, let me give you an example sentence or two, rather. So here we go. What are you getting at? Do you know what the author was getting at in the first chapter? So I'm asking, do you know what he was trying to say? What are you trying to say is basically what get at means. Get at can also be used in a very physical sense, meaning trying to reach something. I'm trying, oh, I've got my hand underneath the sofa and I'm trying to, I'm trying to get at my pen, which rolled right under the sofa and it's gone too far. I can't get at it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. So could you block the spammers, please? Ah, who are the spammers? Um, let me see. Okay. I think, I think I know who you're talking about. I've tried my best. I think I've done it. All right. So what are you trying to get at? Basically, we always use this as a question, but you, you can use it in other ways. Um, does it mean to criticize someone? You can use it in that way too. He was really getting at her. Why are you getting at her like that? So you can use it um, as someone criticizing. But the next one is more commonly used in that sense, which is, well, it, the next one is to get to, to get to someone. So if you don't know what someone is getting at, then it might get to you. <laughs> Let me bring it up on screen. Mm. So to get to is to annoy. Oh, it really gets to me when he bites his nails. It really gets to me when I empty the dishwasher and someone comes around and has a cup of tea and just leaves the cup on the side. They could just put it in the dishwasher. It really gets to me when they don't clean up after themselves. It really gets to me when <laughs> um, when people are rude. It really gets to me when I smile at someone and they don't smile back. So it basically just means annoy. And often we say, don't let it get to you. Don't let it get to you. Yeah. <clears throat> it's so frustrating. My brother is never clear about what he wants. I, I never know what he's getting at. It's so annoying. Look, don't let it get to you. Don't let it get to you. Okay, I won't let it get to me. Sorry, I always let these things get to me. I shouldn't. I should relax. Okay, let me give you another example here. And this is using both of the phrasal verbs I've just mentioned. It's really getting to me that I can't understand what he's getting at. It's really getting to me. It's really annoying me that I can't understand what he's getting at, what he's trying to say. Emmanuel. Um, oh, no. Uh, why is that one I was just trying to bring up? Okay, Derek, I'm not sure why she got to me. I'm not sure why she got to me, why she annoyed me. I'm not sure why she got to me. She just did. She always gets to me. Um, brilliant. This one's good. The heat was beginning. Yeah, the heat was beginning to get to me, so I went indoors. Brilliant. Um, could we use get without two in this meaning 
it gets me every time. This is different. This is different. So if something gets you, if something gets you, then it makes you emotional somehow or catches you somehow. So I might be watching a film. I might be watching Forrest Gump and crying when the girl dies at the end. Sorry if I've ruined it for anyone. But when the girl dies at the end and he's going, oh, Jenny, I'm reading his book, reading his letter to her. It always gets me. It always makes me cry. It always gets me. That's different to it always gets to me because if it gets to me, it's specifically annoying. But if something gets me, then it makes me sad and cry or emotional or something makes me laugh. <laughs> it gets me every time. It gets me every time. Um, if someone gets you, she really gets me. Then in that context, it means that they understand you. Or you can say, no one gets me. I hate it here. No one gets me. No one understands me. I don't feel like I fit in. I don't feel like I belong because no one understands me. No one gets me. Okay. This is why phrasal verbs are so hard. This is why English is so hard. <laughs> All right. So to get at and to get to. And then we have the phrasal verb to let on. So if something is getting to you, you might not let on. To let on is to reveal something that only you know, or only you and a couple of other people know. So something you're holding a secret. If you let on, it means you're kind of revealing that secret. Um, yeah. So if I, if I'm not feeling very well, but I go to work, I do a live lesson and I'm all smiles and I don't say anything about feeling poorly. And then later you find out I was poorly and you say, that's weird. She never let on. I didn't, she didn't reveal that she was feeling unwell in any way. She didn't let on. Okay. Um, let me share an example sentence with you. I try not to let on when things are getting to me. I try not to let on when things are getting to me. Yeah, I think a lot of us are um, that way inclined, aren't we? Um, okay, sorry, there's so many comments coming through. If I'm missing your comment, I do apologize. It's nothing personal. Um, let me see. Uh, the boy injured in the accident was taken to hospital. Okay, that's unrelated. So if it's unrelated, guys, I'm not going to do it in this session because this is for phrasal verbs. Let on, give away. Um, yes, yes, in the sense of give away as in to reveal, to give away information, to reveal information. But let on is specifically when you're withholding information and then you might either accidentally let it go or on purpose, yeah? You know, sometimes we can reveal information without saying anything. Um, so if someone says, you're not pregnant, are you? And you go, no, but really you go, no. Then I'm letting on, aren't I? And you could use give away in that sense as well, yeah. I'm giving it away. So yeah, good. It's, it's a good. it's a good one to couple it with, that one. Um, oh, so many comments. She let on her anger when she came in. She let on her anger. You wouldn't say she let on her anger. You'd say she let on that she was angry when she came in. Maybe she did it just by banging around, slamming the cupboard doors. She let on that she was angry. She revealed that she was angry when she came in. She let on her anger. That, that one doesn't work. She let on her anger. Um, okay. Oh. I prefer to say, I prefer to let on instead of engaging in our arguing. Yeah, I prefer to let on. Okay, instead of arguing because you're trying to withhold information, you prefer to just let on and let them know what's going on. 
get me <clears throat> gets me okay so going back to our previous discussion gets me means to bother someone um no it, it again it depends which context that one's being used in but if if someone gets to you remember the phrase of get to if someone gets to you then they annoy you they bother you but if someone gets you then they understand you. So that little word too makes a big difference. Okay. All right, let's go to the, the last frizzle verb. We've been here for over an hour. <laughs> I only meant this to be a 20 minute lesson. I'm terrible for keeping time. Okay, finally, we have top off, top off. Now to top something off basically means to complete something with the final detail or the final flourish or the final wonderful thing that makes it amazingly whole and complete. This can be used in a very positive way. So we topped the cake off with some chocolate sprinkles and a little cake topper and some candles. Or you can use it in a negative way when you're saying that a, a, a sequence of negative things happened. And then to top it all off, so that's the phrase, to top it all off, this happened. So you're adding an additional thing that completed this cycle of, of negative things um, to top it all off. And I mean, I guess you could use the same phrase in a positive sense. Oh, for my 40th birthday, my um, family surprised me with a holiday to Barbados and... I was greeted there by all my friends. I had no idea this was happening. And then to top it all off, we were staying in the most beautiful suite in the best hotel uh, in town. Yeah, so you could use it in a positive sense. But when I think of it, I think of a negative uh, version. Maybe that means I'm a more negative person. But I've put this example. I can't believe you left me waiting for four hours. I missed my friend's wedding. And to top it all off, it was raining. So I got soaked. <sighs> okay, so the final little thing that made it just terrible, just like the worst day ever to top it all off. Mm -mm. Okay, this one doesn't make sense to me. Don't leave your job without top it off. I need more context to understand what you're trying to say with that one. Okay. Okay, so re-explain the meaning of top off. To top off is like to finish off, to complete something. So we had an amazing day. This good thing happened, that good thing happened, and to complete my amazing day, this happened. We had an amazing day, this happened, that happened, and to top it off, this happened. Or this happened, this happened, and it was topped off with this. Yeah, so just think of it as the verb complete, to complete to top off. We topped off the cake with a huge candle. We topped off the day with a trip to the theatre. I topped off my outfit with a huge hat. Okay, so to complete, complete something. And hopefully that tops off today's lesson on phrasal verbs. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves, rained off means to cancel, an event is cancelled due to rain or very bad weather. Pop out means to leave somewhere quickly and come back, to leave and come back quickly, briefly, and that's informal. Ask round invite someone to your home for some reason. Ask round. Shoot off. Go somewhere suddenly or quickly. Not coming back necessarily. 
brush off to treat something as unimportant to not give something time and consideration because it's not important to you cheer up to make someone or yourself happier this really cheered me up i hope this lesson has cheered you up get at this means trying to communicate something or well, if we're asking, what are you getting at? We're asking, what are you trying to communicate? Physically, it means to reach something. Okay. To get at, to reach something. Get to, in the context we've discussed today, it means to annoy. If something gets to you, it annoys you. Let on. To let on is to reveal something that you're holding a secret and to top off is to complete so that tops off this lesson Ta -da! okay ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for joining me today don't forget that you have until the first of march to join our phrasal verb language booster this is to learn 300 phrasal verbs in 30 days with the use of multiple uh, resources, including video, audio, PDFs, interactive activities, and live lessons with myself, as well as an engaging and motivated community of learners. Once you sign up, you have access to everything for life. So even if you can't take part in the challenge of a 30-day booster, you can take your time and engage with the information at your own speed. Okay, it's all at a bargain price, but will only be available to buy up until the, the 1st of March. I really hope to see some of you there. I know some of you who've already been in the lesson today have already signed up, which is amazing. And I look forward to going through this language booster with you. If you want to know more, you can go to the website, englishlikeanative.co.uk and just click booster in the top menu or you can just follow the link that's in, hopefully, in the description of this video. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Uh, I do have to head off now because it's been quite a long lesson and uh, the children need me. <laughs> I can look over and see that my, my partner is looking quite stressed trying to feed the kids their dinner. So thanks again. Take care and so long. Bye-bye. <laughs>